Um, <clears throat> the mission of USP is to improve global health through uh, public standards. And when we say uh, standards, we are talking about uh, uh, like the pharmacopoeia um, and related programs that help ensure quality, safety, and benefits of uh, medicines and foods. Uh, next slide. That is just uh, a, an impression about the global footprint of uh, USP um, across all the you know continents. Next, um, our, the focus uh, of USP's global health program, and when I say that, I'm not talking about the the, the scientific division that uh, works on the pharmacopoeia. I'm talking about uh, a different uh, division that um, I work for, uh, which uh, uh, talks about uh, you know advancing public health. Uh, we look at it from the lens of uh, strengthening medicines regulatory systems. I'll come back to that a little bit later. And building local manufacturing capacity, strengthening laboratory systems. These are national quality control laboratories mostly. And uh, workforce development in uh, the domain that we operate in. Next slide, please. Um, I'm not going to be reading um, uh, in detail um, uh, or everything, uh, but um, for regulatory systems, um, we assist in developing capacity of countries in medicine uh, testing, evaluation, inspection, quality surveillance, and USP provides uh, technical assistance uh, to uh, regulatory authorities and medicines national quality control laboratories of SAID. And uh, uh, some of the services that uh, we um, uh, provide and work with um, stakeholders uh, indicate there. So next slide. Um, the lab. Um, helping laboratories like the National Quality Control Laboratory that we uh, of Kenya that we were privileged to work with uh, to uh, assist you know attain WHO uh, pre-qualification and other um, uh, quality certifications uh, like the ISO certification. Um, in terms of manufacturing capacity, uh, we look at it from uh, that process, uh, feasibility studies or even pre-feasibility analysis uh, to uh, product and process. Uh, knowledge transfer, planning, um, which is actually what is happening right now in around the discussions we are having on COVID-19 manufacturing in Kenya, uh, Rwanda, and um, uh, Ghana, Senegal, South Africa, uh, and Nigeria. Those are the countries uh, we are currently advising on uh, uh, manufacturing process for COVID-19. Um, collaborations with the university are uh, important for ensuring the workforce uh, is in place. Um, apparently, or, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, you know um, just the truth of the matter is that uh, uh, regulatory area or uh, space is a fairly specialized area and we find very few players, so it's important that we continue really developing the uh, capacity um, in quality and uh, regulatory sciences. So, um, I'll provide a focus on the maybe first two um, examples. Um, uh, currently, as we speak, we are working with the East Africa Community uh, Regional Center of Excellence, uh, which is housed at the University of Rwanda, um, to develop uh, an MSc curricula. Actually, not an MSc, MSc curricula, that's plural, in regulatory sciences, uh, pharma um, quality assurance, quality control, and vaccine production. Uh, so those uh, curricula are at different stages of uh, uh, development. The one on uh, uh, quality assurance called quality control is uh, finalized, is now uh, undergoing uh, review uh, by the university and also uh, 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 kind of a ratification by the ESC member states. But remember this is an ESC curriculum that uh, will be used to train uh, workforce. Uh, for, for the uh, East Africa community and beyond. Um, we did a similar thing previously with Nigeria. Okay, next slide. Um, I want to zero in on something a little bit uh, that we are doing. Um, the previous slide I was just talking about USP um, and maybe what I did not uh, mention uh, um, about USP is uh, it's uh, a non-profit uh, organization um, it's uh, an old organization. Um, it uh, precedes the FDA, uh, 200 years plus old organization. And uh, when the FDA, US FDA, um, you know, came in, uh, found the uh, USP was already producing the pharmacopoeia. So, um, not to destabilize things, the US government, um, uh, you know, 
I chose to leave the USP to continue producing the pharmacopoeia for uh, the US government and, uh, and, and beyond. Uh, but um, uh, the work, uh, the pharmacopoeia work is not uh, funded through the US government. It's funded just through um, a revolving fund of uh, the pharmacopoeia that is produced and, uh, and sold out and the standards, the chemical standards that are produced and sold out and the revenue that comes in uh, goes into plowing back uh, uh, into scientific um, into, into the, to the scientific um, side of things of de developing and maintaining and updating the pharmacopoeia. So uh, what I want to discuss here is a specific uh, uh, assignment that um, USP was um, in, uh, requested and contracted by uh, US, US, USAID to help uh, promote uh, system for assuring quality of uh, medical products uh, across the globe. Um, so it's called Promoting the Quality of Medicines Plus program, which that's actually the program that I am the uh, director for, uh, Eastern and uh, Southern Africa. And um, those are the objectives of um, uh, the uh, focus areas. Um, again, it uh, reflects or mirrors um, uh, the slide you saw yesterday by Professor Kokwaro when he was talking about the systems approach and um, you know um, the health systems building blocks of uh, WHO. So we apply the same uh, or similar thinking uh, in the way we uh, strengthen uh, quality uh, uh, systems. So the first area looks at governance systems, uh, the second area looks at uh, specifically the functional area of uh, uh, regulatory, regulatory, you know, processes and uh, systems, and helping to improve them. And the third area looks at uh, financial or how to optimize financial resources. Again, that part I, I, I'm just using this opportunity to reinforce some of the things that Professor was saying yesterday. There are only two things that you are about when you're talking about finances. Where is the money coming from, and how are you using the money? So. That whole objective is anchored on those two things. And then increase supply of assured uh, uh, essential medical products. And when you say supply here, we are talking about the original supply. We are not talking about uh, supply chain from procurement. We are talking about manufacture. Uh, the, giving, the, giving, the giving birth to you know, the, the, the products that uh, eventually will uh, fill the, the, the supply chain. Then, um, lastly, that uh, agenda is about um, that objective is about our, our learning agenda. Um, just pausing, reflecting uh, from our experiences, and uh, you know, uh, sharing them. Next slide. So that shows um, in the eastern and southern Africa. Uh, it might, the slide might uh, be um, a little bit uh, uh, unupdated, uh, uh, but it gives you an idea of, uh, in terms of the footprint. We have presence in Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, uh, Mozambique, Madagascar, South Africa, and uh, recently uh, Lesotho, and some uh, work in Malawi. Next slide. Um, this slide uh, kind of uh, connects with what we saw earlier uh, from uh, our uh, colleague uh, uh, Franco uh, uh, when he was uh, uh, showing um, areas that could be. Um, you know, benefit from the, digi the digital technologies that he was explaining, and um, I, he highlighted one area of uh, you know quality, um, you know, uh, fighting uh, uh, the problem of uh, poor quality products, and it's important to emphasize because I guess this audience here uh, we know that uh, poor quality products are harmful, and um, the prevalence when you look at the prevalence he quoted 17 percent prevalence of poor quality products and that is a big problem um, we want to be uh, to assure the public that whatever products that they are receiving that are of assured quality and therefore safe and therefore efficacious uh, next. this is how we uh, look at um, a medical product uh, quality assurance system um, we uh, see that the uh, regulatory authority plays a very critical role and that's why at the, at the bottom there is kind of a foundation uh, everything else is uh, anchored on uh, a strong functional uh, re national regulatory system um, 
in some some countries have an authority or uh, you know uh, an institution uh, other countries are still you know uh, struggling to have um, those, those kind of uh, um, uh, institutions you know in place so sometimes i use uh, national uh, regulatory system sometimes i use national uh, regulatory authority to mean the same and you can see um, uh, you can see um, the other areas is the typical supply chain which again I, I won't want to go into it is i think here we this is a supply chain forum so i take it for granted that the other elements of supply chain you are familiar with um, yesterday also there was some mention about uh, you know um, looking at uh, uh, life cycle tools not explicitly stated but in my listening and interpreting that's how i i, I understood uh, also looking at um, you know uh, the the life cycle of a product and how does the regulator what role does the regulator play uh, 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 across the different elements of the life products life cycle from preclinical clinical um, production um, and quality control to marketing and post-marketing so you can see something we have what we can call the you know uh, pre-marketing phase and then we have the post-marketing phase so the regulator needs to span uh, all those processes to the to what extent the regulator spans in a country is some of the things that we discuss with those regulators and and we we, we advise and help to strengthen uh, the system accordingly in some countries it might not be necessary to have some of the functions especially countries that are not even manufacturing there are some countries that are not, not manufacturing so some some of the areas there may not apply or you know other specialized areas like for example vaccine lot release so uh, when we discuss uh, i think next slide will be showing that yes i took this from the pan american uh, health organization uh, publication uh, where um, it gives an idea of what essential regulatory functions uh, might be considered depending on the nature of the countries, uh, especially for small states. Sometimes we are called upon to help uh, really a small country um, that, is, uh, that wants to uh, strengthen its regulatory system. So um, this um, publication is really uh, helpful. I forgot to put citation, uh, I think when I was updating uh, the slides, uh, but it's from the Pan, Pan American Health uh, Organization. Um, so, or you'll see, um, and it, 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 it mirrors very well with what uh, it's actually um, derived from the World Health Organization's uh, uh, recommendations of uh, the core regulatory functions that need to be in place for a regulatory authority. Um, uh, and WHO uses a tool, it's called the Global Benchmarking Tool, to assess the capacity, the institutional capacity of a regulatory authority according to those, you know, uh, nine regulatory functions, uh, some of which are shown there, the national regulatory systems, the registration and marketing authorization process, uh, licensing of establishments, um, market surveillance and control vigilance, uh, clinical trial oversight, regulatory inspection, and laboratory testing. There is also a lot, lot release which uh, uh, is not reflected here because uh, it's arguable whether for small countries you might need to have that. And then we have cross-cutting elements again, very similar to what Professor Papuaro was, uh, you know, uh, illustrating. Uh, in, in brief, um, you know, health systems, uh, you can play around, it's, 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 it's malleable, you know, you, you can reconfigure to suit a certain context uh, uh, situation. So when you learn health systems, those of uh, it's not like it's just a uh, uh, fixed uh, thing. It's a very malleable, uh, you know, conceptualization that you can adapt to uh, situations. But you, there are some things that will keep on, you know, recurring, like the legal foundation, and, uh, the financing was talked about, and uh, human resources, information systems. We've been talking about information systems. Uh, next slide. So, um, I'm Going towards, you know, uh, the end of uh, this brief um, uh, presentation, and I wanted to bring things back home. Uh, so, what does it mean for Kenya? Uh, what what kind of things are we doing in Kenya? This is not exhaustive. This is just illustrative. Uh, we um, currently 
working with PSK uh, to develop uh, or adopt uh, a, a course on pharmaceutical quality assurance and regulation um, as, a, you know, as a CPD kind of opportunity. So this um, is still in the works and we are hoping that it will be finalized and uh, uh, the office of the PSK CEO is, uh, is uh, we are working very closely uh, with them and also uh, some colleagues who have been uh, uh, serving as subject matter experts um, in the development of uh, that material. Um, then the rest, a lot of other areas, remember I said, uh, we see the regulatory authority, in this case Farmers and Poisons Board, to be very critical. So a number of uh, things that um, we are working on um, also uh, focus on really strengthening the Farmers and Poisons Board uh, systems. Uh, second um, uh, point there is uh, uh, supporting the uh, joint pharmacovigilance and post-marketing surveillance technical working group, which we help to establish for the Pharmacy and Poisons Board, uh, to play a more strategic role uh, in terms of oversight in the country, uh, monitoring and, um, and then uh, nabbing um, poor quality products in circulation and taking action. You know, taking action is another side of the story and finding where the, 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 the problem products is also another side of the story and both need to really work uh, together. Um, we've worked, uh, because of the flavor of the funding that we receive from USA, uh, we receive uh, uh, malaria and uh, family planning um, uh, reproductive health and uh, maternal and child health funding. So um, in, in supporting the, the system, in supporting pharmacy and poison control, we also need to um, remember that uh, we have to um, uh, uh, ride on the, you know, the platform of really helping uh, the, the disease program that is making available the funding. So some of the, there's a connection between the disease program and the, and the pharmacy and poison support. Um, uh, so the third uh, uh, point um, speaks of um, you know the work that uh, we uh, began and we are continuing to do in terms of um, helping to uh, strengthen the national quality assurance strategies of the Ministry of Health through the HPT uh, div the division or department and the malaria program. Uh, so the HPT uh, strategy uh, for um, it's called what the supply chain uh, strategy strategy plan by. Uh, uh, HPT Directorate of Ministry of Health, um, we uh, also looked at the quality uh, assurance aspect of that strategy and uh, it's a very good strategy, it's guiding a lot of the work that we're doing. Um, then fourth is uh, working closely with the National Quality Control Laboratory um, and we have helped them to um, revise their strategic plan and um, other ongoing technical um, capacity building uh, interventions. When I say capacity building, I mean both um, uh, you know workforce capacity building and also institutional uh, capacity building. Okay, so um, these are some of the stakeholders that we've been working with uh, across the globe. Uh, this is a dangerous slide because uh, there could be a really a stakeholder that I might have forgotten to include there audience here. It's, uh, it's a dangerous uh, slide for me. So if uh, a partner, if you are here and uh, <laughs> I did it in good year, please uh, accept my apologies. It's, uh, it was in, in Next slide, please. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>